Well, I was wrong about USB-C on the iPhone 15. It's actually even more powerful than I realized. In my last video, I tested the iPhone 15 Pro with a USB-C hub, connecting it to Ethernet, external drives, webcams, and more. In that last video, you guys left hundreds of comments asking me to try even more things like keyboards, mice, game controllers, and even the studio display. So let's test it all right now. First of all, you can actually connect an iPhone 15 Pro and even the regular 15 to a studio display and it acts like a USB hub. And if you connect it to a studio display, you can actually go to the settings app, display and brightness, and you have controls for the studio display right here in the settings app. Then some of you asked about USB keyboards. So I'm gonna plug in my Keychron Q1 Pro here. And yes, you can use USB keyboards with iPhone 15. Some of you even asked about mouse support. Now I originally think this didn't work. And if you connect a mouse with USB, it doesn't seem the iPhone recognizes it. But if you go into the settings app and then go out to accessibility, go down to touch, if you turn on accommodations, you can actually go down to devices and connect a Bluetooth device, namely a mouse. So this is the MX Master 3. It will connect to the iPhone and now you can literally use a mouse with your iPhone. And if I put my iPhone in landscape mode, here I am with a mouse and a keyboard and is an iPhone basically a computer? Let's go even one step further and try a game controller. Here on my iPhone, I'm gonna use the Xbox Cloud Gaming website, added it to my home screen. And you can see here it needs a controller. Well, I'm gonna connect this Xbox Series S controller into the studio display, which is acting like a hub. It doesn't seem to recognize it connected directly to USB. I can connect the Xbox controller via Bluetooth here on my studio display. And like I said in my last video, you can plug in an ethernet adapter to your iPhone and now you can do cloud gaming with an Xbox controller on a studio display on ethernet. What? Now, as you can see, it is not taking up the full studio display. So it looks like if you're doing cloud gaming, might not be the best experience. And even opening up an arcade game, like one of the Alto Odyssey's games, still doesn't take up the full screen, but still kind of wild that you could just do it. Now, just for kicks, this is an iPhone 15 in hospital white or blue as Apple calls it. And if I plug this into the studio display, it begins charging. You can see the iPhone right here on the studio display and you can still use the mechanical keyboard here with the iPhone 15. All right, I'm gonna switch to this Anchor USB-C hub. This lets you connect it to a USB-C power source, HDMI, a USB-C accessory, and some USB-A and SD card slots. Now, some of you asked, can you record to an external SSD through a USB hub? And you definitely can. I've connected the Samsung USB 3.1 SSD. And if I go into video mode here on the phone, I'll turn on ProRes. You can actually see the little USB symbol right here, which lets you know that I'm recording out to USB-C. You can also see the record time there, which is 36 minutes. If I unplug it, you'll see the USB-C symbol disappear. Now, as I mentioned before, 4K60, it just won't let you do it on the iPhone for some reason. But if I connect the hub again with that USB SSD, now I can record 4K60 through the hub directly to the SSD and I get about 18 minutes of 4K60. And just like that external USB flash drive works through a hub, you can actually connect a microphone, something like the Rode Wireless Go 2 or any USB mic, and if I connect that to the hub, you'll see that ferrite here, which is pulling the current audio device, will actually use the Rode Wireless Go 2 as the audio source. Now, it doesn't seem like I can record to an external USB SSD and also have an audio microphone plugged in. I tried it with the Anchor Hub, and now I'm connected to the studio display. I have my Samsung SSD connected to the studio display and the Rode Wireless Go 2, and it doesn't seem like it's recording to USB over here. So if you wanna record with an external microphone, I think you're gonna have to do it directly onto the phone. It just doesn't seem like there's enough bandwidth to do an external audio device through a hub and also record to an external SSD. It's one or the other. But if you do wanna film yourself with an external microphone and also the video monitor it on a big screen, you can use a capture device. This is one that's about $20 on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description. And if you use the new free Orion app on your iPad, any iPad with USB-C, the makers of the Orion app also make the app Halide, which is really good. I can actually use a USB-C hub connected to my iPhone with HDMI out into this capture device and see my iPhone screen here on my iPad. Then I'll put my iPhone in a tripod like so. And let's use the good back camera. I'm going to connect the Rode mic receiver to the USB-C hub as well. And if I hit record, I can now monitor myself in the free Orion app on my iPad through the HDMI cable into the USB-C hub. And I'm using the external microphone also connected to that USB-C hub, which is connected to the iPhone. And the video you're watching right now was actually recorded on the iPhone using this setup. One more correction, in my last video, I said it wouldn't work with USB audio devices, but that seems to depend on what audio interface you're using. For instance, I can connect this Focusrite Vocaster 2. If I connect this interface to the USB-C hub and then plug the USB-C hub into power, 
the iPhone actually recognizes the audio interface and can even do multi-channel recording in apps like this in Ferrite. If you wanna see a full video on using your iPhone for like filming and a studio setup, there's a link in the description, check that out below. And if we test this with a regular iPhone 15, all of this also works with the regular iPhone 15. This is connected to the audio interface, which is connected to the USB-C hub, which is connected to power, and even the HDMI app for monitoring is also working in the Orion app. All right, and finally, some of you asked about a speed test on the disc. I'm using this app here. I'll put a link to this app in the video description. I'm not sure if this is the best app for this. If you know of one better, let me know. But I've connected the Samsung external SSD directly to the iPhone. And if I do a write read speed test, it looks like around 50 megabits per second writing. And there you go about 180 to 200 megabits per second reading. If you have a better app for reading SSDs, let me know down in the comments. And if I didn't cover what you were looking for, I mean, I did keyboards, mice, game controllers, let me know if there's something else you would like me to test the new iPhone 15 Pro with USB-C. And before you go, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, even more videos coming very soon. And if you're wondering to do with the new action button on your iPhone 15 Pro, I actually have an entire video where I go through creating shortcuts that show menus and even change the function per focus mode. You can check out that video right here. And there's another great video you can watch right underneath it.